Good morning po sa inyong lahat. I am Aldrin and I serve as one of the pastors here in Bread from Heaven Community Church in East Manila. At bago po tayo magsimula, binabati ko po kayong lahat, especially yung ating mga first time viewers. Binabati ko po kayo ng Happy Father's Day. May the Lord bless you and may He continuously guide you as you lead your families. Today is the start of our new sermon series in 1 Corinthians. So para po ngayong araw na ito, we will have an introductory sermon about Corinthians. We will talk about 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 1 to 3. Let me read it to you from the New Revised Standard Bible. At kung kayo po ay may mga Biblia, pwede nyo pong i-open yung Bibles ninyo and you can follow along as I read. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your word. And we pray for your guidance. We pray, Lord, that as we start a new series in the book of First Corinthians, you will guide us and give us understanding. Maraming salamat po, Panginoon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mas ma-enjoy po natin ang Bible kapag nalalaman po natin ang mga importanting detalye neto. Madaming mga tao ang nagsasabi na very challenging basahin ang Bible. Pero, meron po akong tip para sa inyo para mas maging enjoyable yung pagbabasa natin ng Bible. Particularly sa 1 Corinthians. Usually po sa mga epistles or letters tulad ng 1 Corinthians, nagpapakilala po dito yung author at dinidescribe niya rin dito yung kanyang audience or recipients, yung mga sinusulatan niya. At ganun po ang nabasa natin sa 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 1 to 3. Makikita po natin na nagpakilala po yung author. At sa panimula pa lamang, yung unang salita, makikita po natin na ang author ng 1 Corinthians ay si Apostle Paul. Papaano siya nagpakilala? Nagpakilala siya una as Paul, the person who is called by God. Sabi niya sa verse 1, Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God. Si Apostle Paul po ay napakadaming credentials. Siya ay isang religious leader at nanggaling siya sa isang prominent family. In fact, Sa Philippians 4, 1 to 6, dito po uh, nagbanggit siya ng iba sa kanyang mga credentials. Ang sabi dito, let me read it to you. If someone else thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Ang sabi ni Paul, mas may confident siya. No? May confident siya to be proud sa kanyang uh, mga na-accomplish. Bakit? Kasi ito, siya ay circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel. He is from the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law, a Pharisee. As for zeal, persecuting the church, as for righteousness, based on the law, faultless. Yung mga nagyayabang at naglalagay ng confidence sa kanilang sariling righteousness, accomplishment, no? sa pagiging magaling nila sa sa kanilang pamumuhay. Ang sabi ni Paul, I have more confidence 
kung ibabase ko lamang sa family background ko at sa mga accomplishments ko. Yung mga nilista niyang credentials po dito ay yung mga bagay na binibigyang halaga nung time niya. No? Galing siya sa magandang pamilya sa tribe of Benjamin. Ang tawag nga niya sa sarili niya, Hebrew of Hebrews. No? Tapos, um, siya din ay circumcised. Ito yung sign na uh, sila ay part ng covenant people of God. At siya ay very zealous. And sabi niya, as of righteousness, no, according to the law, faultless. Kung baga si Apostle Paul, parang sinasabi niya, nabasa ko na yung Biblia. Yung mga sinasabi dyan, as far as I'm concerned, ginagawa ko siya. Very zealous ako, very religious ako. At hindi lang yun, galing ako sa isang prominenteng family. No? So, kung titingnan mo, religyoso, may pangalan, no? edukado, isa siyang Pharisee. Ang mga Pharisees nung time na yun, very educated. So, nilista niya yung mga credentials na ito, at kung tutuusin, pwede niya itong banggitin kung siya may confidence no, sa sarili niya at sa kanyang accomplishments. Pero bakit nakakapagtaka na nung nagpakilala siya sa 1 Corinthians, hindi niya ito binanggit? Rather, dinescribe lang niya yung sarili niya na isang tao who is called by God. Naniniwala po ako na kaya po ganito ang pagpapakilala ni Apostle Paul dahil binago ng Lord si Paul at ang kanyang pananaw sa buhay. In Acts chapter 9, Paul was the major persecutor of the church. In fact, humingi siya ng mga authorization letters doon sa leaders nila para kapag may nakita siyang mga Christians o mga churches, ito'y ipapakulong niya or ipapasara niya. No? So, ang mission ni Paul, hindi lang i-destroy yung Christianity, ang mission niya ay burahin yung Christianity. Pero, on his way to Damascus in Acts 9, we will see that on his way, Paul saw a great light. Sobrang liwanag at narinig niya yung tinig ni Jesus. Ang sabi dito ni Jesus, Saul, Saul, yun yung, uh, yun yung other name ni Paul. Eh. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? At tinanong ni, ni Saul or Paul, Who is this, Lord? Ang sabi ni Jesus, it is I, Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Ito po yung naging turning point sa buhay ni Paul. Akala niya dati, mga panatiko lang yung mga Christians. Pero dahil sa encounter niya with the Lord Jesus, the Apostle Paul, who is a persecutor of the church, became part of the church. He became a believer of Jesus Christ. At kung ang mission niya dati ay burahin ang Kristyanismo, this time ang mission niya ay ang magtatag ng Kristyanismo, ng simbahan, ang ipamalita ang Ebanghelyo sa ibang parts ng mundo. Alam po nyo, when you encounter the Lord Jesus, your life will never be the same again. Si Jesus po ay hindi isang doktrina. Christianity is not about learning facts about Jesus. Of course, it's important. But Jesus Christ is not a doctrine. Jesus Christ is a person. And we can know Him, and when we truly know Him, we will never be the same again. Just like the Apostle Paul. Kaya kahit madami siyang credentials na sinasabi sa Book of Philippians, sa kanyang family background, sa kanyang education, sa estado niya as a Hebrew of Hebrews, sa kanilang pride, sa kanilang lahi, ang sabi niya sa verse 7 of Philippians 3, 
Yet whatever gains I had, this I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. Itong mga credentials na to, I consider it loss because of Christ. Brothers and sisters, the Apostle Paul, who is proud, who thinks that he is in the right, who persecuted the church, repented and acknowledged that he has committed a mistake, he has sinned against Jesus, whom he is persecuting, and became one of the church. He was stripped down of all the things which he can take pride in. And by the way, yung pangalan po na Paul, in Greek, ang ibig po sabihin ay humble. And I think after the apostle encountered Jesus, he truly lived up by his name. He was humbled. Brothers and sisters, maybe you can also relate with this. Baka meron tayong image or reputation or credential na minemaintain. Yung image natin sa mga kaibigan natin, kung ano yung tingin nila sa atin. Yung image natin na pinoproject sa social media. Perhaps yung status natin sa buhay na sinasabi natin, this is who I am. Perhaps yung trabaho natin at kung ano-ano mang bagay na ginagawa natin, perhaps yun ang description natin sa sarili natin. At meron tayong minemaintain na image. Siguro para sa mga kabataan sa atin, you want to, to look cool. No? Meron kang minemaintain na image sa mga kaibigan mo. But let me ask you this. When you are stripped down of all of this, how do you see yourself? Kinoconsider mo ba ang sarili mo na called by God? Ikaw ba ay na kay Kristo? Would you say that you are a person who belongs and lives for the Lord? You know, the Apostle Paul realized what truly matters in life. That when he was stripped down by his pride, the sources of his pride, he realized that what mattered is he belonged to God. He is called by God. And so I believe that Paul, who is now an avid follower, worshiper of Jesus, simply sees himself as someone was been called by God only by grace. And so when he wrote to the church in Corinth, he described himself as an, a, a person who is called by God. Okay? And also, Paul referred to himself as an apostle. Ang sabi niya, I am called to be an apostle. Ang ibig sabihin po ng salitang apostle or sa original language ay apostolos. In English, ito po ay envoy or emissary. Or in other words, sugo. Isinugo siya. Ang isang apostle ay isinugo ng Diyos at meron siyang unique na God-given authority para mangaral at mamahala sa simbahan. Bakit ko sinabing unique? Kasi according to Acts 1, ito ang sabi ni Pedro noong naghahanap sila ng ipapalit kay Judas. Kasi si Judas, ba dati siyang part ng 12 apostles, pero tinaraydor niya si Kristo. So naghahanap siya ng ipapalit kay Judas na magiging part ng 
apostleship, ng 12 apostles. At ito yung sabi ni Peter sa Acts 1. In verses 21 to 22, let me read it to you. Therefore, Peter said, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time the Lord Jesus was living among us. Beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. Ibig sabihin, ang apostle po ay someone who is present and have literally witnessed and encountered the Lord Jesus. And according to Peter, very specific, ang sabi pa niya dito sa, sa Acts, from that, someone who witnessed from the time of John's baptism, nung sim, simulat sa una pa, nung ministry ni Kristo, hanggang sa ascension ni Christ, sa una hanggang sa huli, nung si Jesus, Jesus ay nagme-minister, in the world. That's why unique ang office na ito. No? Ito yung mga literally na encounter si Kristo, nakarinig sa mga teachings ni Kristo, na hawakan, na fellowship literally si Jesus from the beginning of Jesus' ministry up until his ascension. That's why this is a unique calling, a unique position. However, meron pong few exceptions. A few exception was made by Jesus Christ himself. Paul was called to be the apostle to the Gentiles. He witnessed Jesus on the road to Damascus and Jesus himself appointed Paul. Si Apostle Paul po ay hindi siya part ng original na 12 apostles ni Jesus Christ. Ang sabi natin according to Peter sa Acts 1 na ang apostles ay someone who have witnessed literally and who has been there with Jesus from beginning to the end of ministry of Christ. But Jesus made an except, exemption in Acts 9. He himself appointed Paul. Ang sabi ni Jesus kay Ananias, no, isa ring disciple na kinausap ni Kristo para i-restore yung sight ni Paul. Kasi nung nakakita ng bright light si Saul, he lost his sight. So si Kristo, nangusap siya kay Ananias na si Ananias probably ay may gift of healing at uh, siya'y pupunta kay Paul para i-restore yung sight ni Paul. Pero si Ananias medyo nag-object siya kasi sabi niya, eh Lord, hindi ba ito yung nagpe-persecute? Ito yung nagpapakulong sa mga Kristiyano? Pero ito yung sabi ni Jesus in Acts 9.15. The Lord said to Ananias, Go! This man, referring to Paul, is my chosen instrument to proclaim the name, my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. Si Jesus, ang sabi niya, hindi, pinili ko siya. Siya yung instrumento ko so that my name will be proclaimed in the non-Jewish communities, in the rest of the world. And in 1 Corinthians 15, ito yung description ni Paul sa apostleship niya. Ang sabi ni Paul, starting in verse 8, sabi niya, And last of all, Jesus appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. Ibig sabihin, unusual yung nangyari sa kanya. Hindi ito usual occurrence. No? Unusual na nagpakita sa kanya si Kristo. Verse 9 says, For I am the least of the apostles. So he counted himself as part of the apostles, part of the ministry, means uh, office of the apostles, but he was the least. Bakit? Ang sabi niya kasi, I do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. 
but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them. Yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. So ang apostle po ay unique office sa church para sa mga literal na witnesses ni Kristo at tinawag ni Kristo na may unique authority and responsibility sa simbahan. Iba po ito sa pastor, iba ito sa bishop, at kahit sa uh, Pope ng Roman Catholic Church. Now having said this, Siguro yung iba po sa atin, naka-encounter kayo na may ibang groups na nagsasabi na meron pa ding modern day apostles. No? Ang sabi nila dahil ang apostleship daw ay isang gift of the Spirit based on the reading of 1 Corinthians 12, 28-29. Now, I love my brothers and sisters in the Lord who says this, but I will respectfully disagree with them no? Kasi hindi naman explicit o malinaw na binanggit sa 1 Corinthians 12, 28 to 29 na yung apostleship ay gift. Most probably, Paul is simply naming the various ministries that God has placed within the church in 1 Corinthians 12, 28 to 29. Not necessarily a gift or part of the list of gifts like in 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 11. Dito po sa 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 11, napakalinaw, enumerate yung different spiritual gifts. Pero dito sa verses 28 at 29, hindi naman malinaw na nabanggit na ang apostles ay isang spiritual gift. In fact, in other places, in scriptures, an apostle usually refers to a unique calling or a unique office rather than a spiritual gift. Now having said this, um, I just want to emphasize na kahit unique ang authority ng Apostle Paul, this doesn't mean na wala na tayong matututunan sa kanya, especially yung mga leaders ng simbahan natin. Hindi porket walang modern day apostles ngayon, ay iba na yung, yung tawag nila, no? Na wala na tayong matututunan sa pagtawag sa kanila ng Panginoon. Marami tayong matututunan dito, especially yung mga leaders sa ating simbahan. At makikita natin sa model ni Paul, yung uh, maraming leadership uh, lessons. In fact, ang sabi ni Paul sa 1 Corinthians 11.1, in-encourage niya to follow his example. Ang sabi niya, follow me, as I follow Christ. And so, ano ba yung mga examples that we can learn as leaders from the Apostle Paul? Unang-una po, the Apostle Paul is very Christ-centered. He is Christ-centered. Si Kristo yung nasa sentro ng kanyang buhay at ministeryo at mensahe. When you read his writings, makikita po natin na yung writings ni Paul ay hindi moralistic, hindi ito legalistic, hindi ito base sa rules and regulations. Although, of course, importante yung morals. Makakasama yun sa writings niya. Pero primarily, hindi dito nakabase ang pangangaral ni Apostle Paul. For example, yung kanyang letter to the Romans, if you read the book of Romans, isa ito sa very popular and very theological writing. No? Very theological of all the writings of the Apostle Paul. And yet here, makikita po natin na in chapters 1 to chapter 11, the Apostle Paul focused on explaining the gospel of Christ. And then yung second part ng kanyang libro, chapters 12 onwards hanggang chapter 16, makikita natin that Paul talked about Christian living. So, here, in the book of Romans, si Paul started with the gospel of Christ. At pagkatapos niyang maipaliwanag, ma-expound ng sobrang lino na ito, that's the only time that he talked about 
Christian living, the morals, no? what it means to live as follower of Christ. So, ibig sabihin, primarily, ang mensahe niya ay ang gospel. And of course, ang implication, when a person receives the gospel, he has to live according to the gospel. He has to live according to the will of Christ. But primarily, Paul is Christ-centered. At ito po yung matututunan ko at matututunan ng mga leaders natin sa simbahan. Ang ministry po natin, ang mensahe po natin, at ang ating pamumuhay ay nakasentro kay Kristo. Hindi ito primarily about rules, about uh, do's and don'ts, or an advice on how to live. Of course, kasama yung mga yun, important yun, but primarily we preach Christ, we teach Christ the gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay? So that's one. He is very Christ-centered. Secondly, he is also spirit-empowered. 1 Corinthians 2, 4 says this. Ang sabi ni Paul, and I'm very relieved na ito yung sinabi niya, no? kasi ang sabi niya, my message and my preaching and teaching is not with wise and persuasive words but with the demonstration of the Spirit's power so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom but on, but on God's power. Hindi raw according to human wisdom, although of course, hindi ibig sabihin na walang wisdom yung tinuturo niya. Hindi lang according to human wisdom, human logic, human intellect, Pero yung message niya is according to the power of the Holy Spirit with the demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. You know, this is a relief to me. Kasi kahit anong sabihin ko, kahit anong, alam mo yun, uh, anong galing ng pag-prepare ko sa sermon, what truly matters is that God's Spirit is at work when the gospel of Christ is preached. This is a relief to me. Kasi hindi po ako eloquent. Hindi po ako um, bombastic preacher. Um, in fact, I, I consider myself as an introvert. But praise the Lord that through the power of the Holy Spirit, by faith, when I preach the gospel, Yun yung gagamitin ng Spirito para ipakilala si Kristo sa mga nakikinig, para baguhin ang buhay ng mga nakikinig, para iligtas ang mga nakikinig ng mensahe nito. And also, Paul is very mission-minded. He is Christ-centered, Spirit-empowered, and mission-minded. And of course, we all know that the Apostle Paul did everything he could. Kung saan-saan siya nagpunta, meron siyang missionary journeys, nakakarana siya ng shipwreck, nakakarana siya ng persecution, he was imprisoned, yet patuloy siyang nangangaral ng salita ng Diyos. Patulong, patuloy siya na, na yung, yung mind niya nakafocus sa task na binigay sa kanya ni Kristo. Brothers and sisters, hindi lang mga leaders natin ang may matututunan dito. Ang ating simbahan, Breadcom is Manila, ay may matututunan dito sa characteristics na ito ni Apostle Paul. Let this be a challenge to our church. Ano yung vision natin? Planting Breadcom churches in every city in the Philippines. At hindi lang sa Pilipinas, even beyond sa ibang bansa. And I think this is a challenge for us to be mission-minded, to be Christ-centered, and to rely on the power of the Holy Spirit, hindi lang sa mga magagandang strategies of planting churches, magagandang methodologies, magagandang programa. Of course, important lahat ng mga ito, 
but primarily we rely, we trust on the power of the Holy Spirit. We believe that Christ is present with us sa simbahan natin through the Holy Spirit. We believe that when we proclaim the gospel, the Spirit is at work. When we pray for the sick, the Spirit is at work. And we, we want to practice the gifts of the Spirit in our church to, as demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit. And so, our church will be built up in faith. Alam nyo po, nag-iisip ako, especially ngayong pandemic, I think, uh, ang, daming, ang daming mga hindi magagandang nangyari sa bansa natin, ang dami nating mga ka-church na uh, naapektuhan yung kanilang livelihood. Pero isa sa, I think, important realization ko ngayong pandemic na ito ay sovereign si God at pwede niyang gamitin ang anumang sitwasyon para turuan tayo. At ito po yung nakikita ko. Dahil sa pandemic na ito, nagkaroon ng parang wake up ko lang simbahan. Nung isang araw nga, nag, uh, I think that was Saturday, uh, that, that was, <laughs> I forgot, but during the, the week, during weekdays, no? Um, Nagkaroon ng meeting yung leaders ng ating simbahan at uh, nagbe-brainstorm kami. We talked about ano na yung gagawin natin, mukhang tatagal pa yung quarantine, yung, uh, yung tatagal pa yung hindi pwedeng mag-mass gathering. And we realized na nasa parang wala kaming sagot, no? para kaming nasa dead end. And you know what, ang sabi, ang sabi ko, well, wh- well, why don't we reset this meeting and let's just pray. Let's ask God. And you know what I realized? This humbles us. This forces us to be on our knees and to pray and to, re- to ask God. And perhaps through this, the Lord will renew us and empower us. And the, the Lord will guide us on how to fulfill our mission, our God-given mission. I believe that through this pandemic, this is a wake-up call for us to be the church amidst opposition. Wala mang literal persecution, pero itong kahirapan na to na nararanasan natin prevents us from gathering, prevents us from uh, reaching out literally to other people, but it also forces us to pray, to be in our knees, and to think of creative ways to fulfill our God-given mission. And so, marami po tayong matututunan, mga kapatid. And that's the characteristics, some of the characteristics that we see from Paul. He is Christ-centered, he is spirit-empowered, and he is mission-minded. Characteristics that I am praying for myself and I am, I am praying for in our church. We cannot accomplish our mission to plant breadcrumb churches in every cities in the Philippines and beyond without being Christ-centered, spirit-empowered, and mission-minded. So why don't we pray for this right now before we move on? Let's just ask the Lord sa kanikanilang mga bahay, let's pray and ask the Lord that He helps us. Heavenly Father, Lord, we pray that You will help us like the way You help the church in Corinth. Help us, Lord, to live in accordance to Your Word. Give us guidance so that we will fulfill our mission. Lord, be with us and remind us that Your Spirit is present in your church. And Lord, because of your Holy Spirit, we have the power to proclaim your name in such a powerful name, uh, in such a powerful way to all the people 
in the Philippines, in the surrounding areas of Bradcom Church, in other parts of the Philippines, and even in our other countries. In Jesus' name, Amen. Opo, I'm really excited. You know, kung ano yung gagawin ng Panginoon sa simbahan natin when we pray. When we pray that we be empowered by the Spirit and we ask help. We ask for guidance as we reach out to other areas. So that's the Apostle Paul. He is someone who is called by God and a person who is called to be an apostle with characteristics such as Christ-centered, spirit-empowered, and mission-minded. I pray for these things to be upon us. Now, let's move to verse 2. Kung kanina nagpakilala si Paul as the author, in verse 2, makikita po natin na ipinakilala dito yung simbahan na sinusulatan ni Apostle Paul. And of course, this is the Church of Corinth. That's why the title of the book is 1 Corinthians. So, sumulat si Paul dito para ibigay yung instruction sa Church of Corinth. At ano ba yung sinabi ni Paul? Paano niya describe yung Corinthian Church? Yung unang salita na ginamit po dito sa verse 2 ay sanctified. Medyo heavy po na word yun, no? Sanctified. Pero ano ba ibig sabihin na ito? It simply means to make holy no? o pinabanal. Christians are people who have been made holy through the work of Christ. Iba ito sa pagiging religious. Okay? Ang pagiging banal ay hindi lamang religious activity na nakikita sa panlabas. Ang pagiging banal ay, na, ay nakikita ng Diyos na nasa sa loob natin. Walang tao ang ipinanganak ng banal. In fact, sa Romans 3, napakalinaw po, it says there that we have all sinned. Lahat tayo may tendency na magkasala. We have, we have all um, made mistakes in the past. Meron tayong kanya-kanyang imperfections. Ano mang galing natin, ano mang bait natin, hindi tayo perfect. At ganun din yung Corinthian Church. In fact, yung description nga ni Apostle Paul sa Corinthian Church, ang sabi niya sa 1 Corinthians 6, 9-11, to <coughs> yung ibang mga members sa kanila, ito yung description. Or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor the idolaters, nor the adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And watch this. And that is what some of you were. Sa Corinthian Church, yung ibang mga members nila, some of them were idolaters. Some of them were adulterers, even homosexuals, engaging to him homosexual activity, swindlers, thieves, mga magnanakaw. So kahit, so makikita natin dito, no, ganong klase silang mga tao dati, bago sila naging uh, kristyano, Pero, ang good news, sabi dito sa verse 11, that, that, that is what some of you were, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified, dineklara kayong matuwid in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Dati, ito yung buhay nyo, pero ngayong na kay Kristo na kayo, you have been sanctified. Ah, Unang-una, you have been washed. Kayo'y nilinis. Nilinis na sa mga kasalanan. Kayo'y pinabanal. You have been sanctified. At kayo'y idineklara na righteous, patuwid. You have been justified. 
sa pamamagitan ng name ni Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. So kahit sampung libong beses ka pa na magpinitensya o sampung libong beses ka pa na magpanata bilang kabayaran sa kasalanan, hindi mo kayang pabanalin ang sarili mo. Si Kristo lamang ang nakapaglilinis, nakapagpapabanal, at hindi ang ating mga sarili. Ang kailangan lang ay manampalataya tayo kay Kristo. No? At nung si Kristo ay namatay sa krus ng Kalbaryo, binayaran na niya, nilinis na niya ang ating mga kasalanan. Dineklara ka na na righteous. Ikaw ay sanctified, pinabanal. Hindi po sa sarili nating gawa, hindi dahil sa sarili nating kabaitan, hindi dahil deserving tayo, kundi dahil sa work ni Jesus Christ in sanctifying us and saving us. Ang tawag po dito, grace. No? Grace. Ibig sabihin ng grace, ay something that you do not deserve, yet God gave it to you because through your faith in Christ Jesus. So, dahil tayo po ay nilinis na ng Panginoon, at um, tayo rin po ay challenge na mamuhay ng banal, ng malinis. Ito po yung sakit ng madaming kristyano. They claim that they have a relationship with Jesus, that their sins have been forgiven by Christ, and rightly so, pero yung buhay nila, hindi karapat dapat. Yung buhay nila, kasumpa-sumpa. Huh? Yan sabi nila, tinanggap nila yung good news, pero yung buhay nila bad news. Pero dahil tayo ay nilinis na ginawang banal na ni Kristo, tayo din ay tinatawag ng Diyos na mamuhay according to this. Ang sabi ni Pedro sa 1 Peter 1, 14-15, as obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. Nung wala ka pa kay Kristo, lahat ng evilness, even the evil desires that you've been doing, do not conform to that. That's your past. But look at verse 15. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. Now, having said this, I'm not saying na wala nang temptation. I'm not saying na dahil pinabanal na tayo ng Diyos ay hindi ka na magkakasala forever. Of course, we know that we are still being tempted. Although binago na tayo ng Panginoon, no, pero binabago pa rin niya tayo. May mga parts pa sa buhay natin na kailangan natin talagang uh, ng tulong ng Panginoon. Pero, kung i-exercise po natin ang faith natin kay Kristo, kahit matempt man tayo, kung talagang exercise natin yung faith natin at gusto natin siyang sundan, tutulungan tayo ng Diyos. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. 1 Corinthians 10.13 Do you believe in this, brothers and sisters? Do you believe that your habitual sins, the temptations that are defeating you, do you believe that you can overcome this? If you are in Jesus, 
you are no longer slaves to sin. You have been set free. If you are in Jesus, kung i-exercise mo yung faith mo, at talagang ninanais mo, hihingin mo yung tulong niya, Lord, I want to follow you. Help me, Lord. Help me to believe you and follow you. Tutulungan ka ng Diyos to overcome temptations as He promised in 1 Corinthians 10.13. Walang anumang temptation ang mag-overcome sa iyo. Walang anumang temptation ang sobrang bigat na hindi mo kayang i-overcome. Hindi ka bibigyan ng ganong kabigat na pagsubok ng Panginoon. But He will provide a way out so that you can endure it. But the challenge for you and me is, will you take this promise and will you believe Jesus? Will you follow Jesus? Lastly, the Corinthian church was also described as saints. Kanina, the church is sanctified, this time saints. Ngayon, pag sinabing saints, Alam ko may mga misunderstanding dito, no? but this is, I think, a good opportunity to clarify the misunderstanding. Pag sinabing saints, hindi po ito yung tumutukoy sa mga rebulto na santo. O hindi ito tumutukoy dun sa mga dinadasalan. No? Saints, yung word the saints, o hagios, simply means holy ones. Connected po ito sa pagiging sanctified. Ang sabi natin, ang sanctified to make holy. Ang saints, ibig sabihin, holy ones. Magkadikit po ito. So, I, wo- I won't take much of your time to explain this kasi napaliwanag ko na po ito kanina when we talk about being sanctified. But let me just say that to be a saint means to be set apart in service of God. Ang church po actually ay community of saints set apart to serve God. Yan po ang definition whenever the Bible refers to saints. Hindi yan yung canonized saints no, ng Roman Catholic. Kung canonized saints ang tinutukoy dito, very unlikely. Kasi ibig sabihin, nung sinabi ni Apostle Paul sa Corinthians, ni-refer sila na saints, ibig sabihin yung buong simbahan. Canonized saints. I don't think that's what he's saying. At uh, very unlikely po ito, no? very unlikely ito, lalo na kapag nabasa natin yung mga problema sa simbahan ng Corinth. Merong problems of division, pride, idolatry, homosexual practice, adultery, no? etc. In fact, isa nga sa reason kaya sumulat si Apostle Paul sa Corinth is to instruct and warn them against division kasi ito yung napakalaking problem sa Corinthian church. So, if may problema ang Corinthian church, then bakit sila tinawag na saints? No? Kung ang nasa isip natin yung canonized saints na parang Sobrang banal, sobrang perpekto, pwede nating dasalan, pwede ano yun, nagmi-miraculo. Then kung, kung maraming problema yung church, bakit ganun yung tawag sa kanila, saints? There are two things that we can learn from this. First of all, to be called a saint is purely by grace. Remember, by grace, nilinis tayo ni Kristo sa mga kasalanan natin, sa lahat ng karumihan natin. We have been declared righteous. And so, to be called holy or holy ones, referring to the church, is only by grace. Kaya lang tayo natatawag na saints dahil sa ginawa ni Kristo sa krus. Dahil nilinis na niya tayo, pinabanal niya tayo, at pinapabanal pa niya through the Spirit and His Word. Secondly, the, Corinthians, the Corinthian church was called saints 
because of what God expects of them. So, by grace, tinawag silang saints. No? As far as sila ay maraming division, marami silang pagkakasala, but as far as God is concerned, nilinis na sila sa pamamagitan ni Kristo. Pero, hindi lang title yung saint na para maganda pakinggan. Yun din ay hamon sa kanila at sa atin sa simbahan so that we will live according to what we been called as saints, community of saints. And so, malaki po yung implikasyon nito. For example, yung holiness na topic, hindi siya sikat sa mga conferences. Hindi siya sikat sa 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 madaming alam mo yun, kahit sa mga sermons. Well, I'm just speaking from experience. No, I don't know about the other church. Pero usually, ano yung mga conferences tungkol saan? Sa church growth, sa mga program, pagpapatakbo ng program. No? Sometimes nga, measure natin yung maturity or yung growth ng church. No? In terms of numbers, in terms of the number of baptisms, even in terms of theology, kung gano'n ba kalawak yung kaalaman ng simbahan, gano'n kadami yung information na alam ng simbahan. But never in terms of holiness. Maybe we are neglecting this, brothers and sisters, sa sarili nating simbahan. Maybe we are looking at the developments in our church. You know, recently, uh, last Thursday, kaka-move out lang po natin sa Castillo Royal. No? Nag-end na yung contract natin. No? Uh, nagpunta po ako doon, pati si Pastor June, kasama sila Brother Tix, Brother Jeff, at yung iba pang uh, mga tumulong. I'm really thankful nung minove out natin. Thankful ako kay Kuya Jerry at Kuya Tess for providing the storage place. And then, here we are praying and looking forward kung ano yung next venue natin, ano yung mga magiging plans, developments in our church. And this is all very important. You know, but when I was reflecting on this, I realized, hindi sapat yung ibinibigay nating importance, yung emphasis when it comes to growing in holiness. No, usually when we talk about church development, etong mga etong mga uh, venue, etong etong mga programs, etong mga ito ang pinag-uusapan natin. But what about holiness? I think yes, totoo na it concerns about numbers and it concerns about the church characteristics but also the church Christ-likeness, the church's godliness and holiness. That is what growth is all about. And so I pray, at ako po dinedesire ko, in fact, ang salitang bread ko, di ba yung letter B doon, ano, beautiful, right? I pray that when the Lord looks at us, He will see the beauty of Christ. I pray that when we grow, it, it's not just in terms of programs or numbers, but with the demonstration that we are really the body of Christ. Kasi nagiging kamukha natin ng patuloy si Kristo. I pray for us to be a church marked with holiness for the glory of God. So let me summarize what we've talked about. We talked about the intro introductory uh, things or introduction to the book of First Corinthians and we talked about the author of the book, the Apostle Paul, who is described as a person who is called to be an apostle by the will of God in Christ Jesus. 
we also talk about the recipients or the audience no the author and the audience the corinthians who have been sanctified and declared saints purely by grace kahit ang dami nilang kamalian ang dami nilang mistakes na nagawa at nagagawa ng patuloy by god's grace they are in christ saints and sanctified forgiven cleansed by the blood of christ hallelujah we praise you lord for your amazing grace we praise you lord jesus that by your grace through christ we have been accepted as your own hindi po enough yung salita to describe how amazing this is oh lord we're just grateful for this. Hallelujah. Maraming salamat, Panginoon. At si Apostle Paul po ay nagtapos sa verse 3 with these words. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, kapag nagbasa po kayong ng mga commentaries, usually, Itong linya na to ay described as a greeting. And rightly so. But I think there's, there is a reason why Paul greeted them by reminding them of God's grace and peace. As I've mentioned before, si Apostle Paul, si Apostle Paul po mismo ay nakatanggap ng abounding grace at peace sa Panginoon sa pamamagitan ni Kristo. Remember, he was the worst persecutor of the church, but through Christ, he received grace upon grace. Sa kabila ng imperfections at kasalanan ng Corinthian church, the Apostle Paul is reminding them that same grace that, ex that I experienced as a persecutor of the church, that same grace that, that is at work in me, Dating persecutor ngayon, I'm an apostle of Jesus Christ. That same grace is extended to you, is available to you in Christ. Praise God. Despite sa mga imperfections ng Corinthian Church, despite sa imperfections ng ating church, Still, that same grace that Paul experienced, that rescued him, the grace that called him and gave honor to him as an apostle, that same grace is being extended to me and to you. And so, Paul is reminding us of the grace and the peace of God, even through this simple greeting. And so, siguro yung iba po sa atin, nakagawa po tayo ng mga pagkakamali in the past. Meron tayong mga nagawa na blunders na even until now, we are still carrying it. Siguro yung iba sa atin ay nakakagawa ng pagkakamali patu ng patuloy Well, today, you've been reminded that our God is gracious and that grace is available to you in Christ. Brothers and sisters, what I learned from my Christian life so far, no? 38 years old po ako, so far what I've learned in my own Christian life is this. There is never a time that we don't need the grace of God. Sa bawat phase ng buhay natin, ng journey natin, we are always in need of the grace of God. Because we are weak. We are imperfect. We are people who have sinned and have been rescued only by the grace of God. And we are being rescued even right now. At sa bawat yugto ng buhay natin, we are always in need of the grace of God. 
probably you need that grace today. And the answer, according to the passage, is that grace in through Jesus Christ is extended to you. Grace and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Why don't you join me in praying for this? Heavenly Father, first of all, I want to thank you that you are a God of grace and peace. Salamat, Panginoon, that through Jesus Christ, you are showering us, you are smothering us with so much grace and love. There are times na hindi namin makita ito, na hindi namin ma-feel ito, but help us through your Spirit to grasp this and to treasure this tulad ng sinaba, sinasabi sa salita ninyo. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters. Lord, I pray that you will open their eyes and they will see how amazing your grace is. I pray, Lord Jesus, that through your grace, tutulungan niyo po yung simbahan namin na maging mas kamukha ni Jesus Cristo. And I pray, Lord God, that through this sermon series, our church will learn what it means to be a church who is sanctified, a church who is a community of saints. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.